How would you characterize this weekend attack, and what do you see as the fallout, at least in the near term? Well, you're seeing a lot of tactical reporting from the ground. It's a shocking event. Uh, the psychological effects will be felt. People who were in the United States and Washington and New York uh, during 9-11 in 2001 will recall that the reaction uh, was that something major has to be done. And I think that we can expect Israel uh, to have the same kind of reaction politically and, and uh, uh, throughout the country. And what I'm trying to say is that they, of course, they want to secure the border. They want their, they will, the focus will turn to their hostages. But in the meantime, I think there will be a reaction that says everyone involved in this has to pay a price. And what that means to me is it goes beyond Gaza. It goes beyond uh, Hamas. This has finger, more than fingerprints. It's quite clear to people who follow Iranian affairs that this has been planned for months. It was a sophisticated operation that involved drones. It involved different kinds of vehicles. It involved uh, hang gliders. It involved uh, explosives. Uh, it involved workers who were pretending to be seeking uh, okay. jobs across the border. And so uh, this, there's going to be a much bigger reaction, and it will last quite a while. All right, so, Ambassador, you're saying this goes beyond Gaza and even beyond Hamas. Who else do you believe may be, may be involved in this? And, and when you say that, spell it out for our audience right now when you say it goes beyond this region, because right now we're looking at the pictures and we're talking about the damage and, of course, the lives lost here. A week ago in Tehran, the Iranians held something called the, the annual Islamic Unity Conference, and the supreme leader, Ali Khamenei, called, uh, said that the, quote, usurper Zionist regime, meaning Israel, is a cancer that will definitely be eradicated at the hands of the Palestinian people and the resistance forces throughout the region. There were two meetings in the last uh, week in Beirut where the foreign minister of Iran attended with Hezbollah and Hamas. So you can see planning took place for this. Um, the, the hostages will become the the, the, the bigger focus, right. I believe. Uh, and the Iranians have, have had so, four uh, hostage events in the last year. Ambassador, I, I just, just want to go to Gaza. your point. And for the audience, Tehran is the capital of Iran. So are, are you saying directly that you believe that Iran was, was involved in the planning and execution of this attack? I believe so. And, of course, you won't hear reporters say that. They're waiting for the White House to confirm. They're waiting for Secretary Blinken. And, of course, they're being very careful. They don't want to expand uh, the crisis. But I believe that Iran was directly involved. I, I will be shocked if we don't find that the Quds Force, which is Iran's elite external branch of the Revolutionary Guard Corps, uh, was okay. shipping arms probably through Sudan and the Sinai Peninsula. That was This was planned for months. It was highly sophisticated. And as I say, Iran has been seizing hostages tactically uh, in recent uh, months and years. They, they, they took they needed to get a spy out of Belgium, so they Under, seized understood. an aid worker. Ambassador, once I, before before we get too beyond just this conflict, we want to focus on this at least for today. Um, yes, your belief is that Iran is directly involved. So give us a sense: Iran's involvement. How does that impact um, Saudi-Israeli negotiations um, to kind of uh, lower the tensions between those two nations? And then also, just very briefly, kind of spell out: these are two different Muslim um, sects here. We're talking Sunni Muslims and Shiite Muslims, both involved. Well, uh, quite true, Frank, and it, it is cynical for uh, the Iranian regime in Tehran, which is Shia, uh, to use Sunni uh, Muslims in, Pal in the Palestinian areas uh, as, as pawns in their, their desire to, to, to avoid being thrown out of power. They're under pressure because of all the uh, demonstrations at home, as you know. So what they're trying to do is to say, we're still a vibrant revolutionary regime against Israel. Um, Iran has been uh, very much uh, involved with Hamas, giving them arms, paying suicide bombers uh, in, Pal in the Palestinian areas. Okay. And uh, they want to break up uh, the Saudi-Israeli rapprochement. If Saudi Arabia and, Israeli were, uh, and Israel were to get together, they could combine security forces. They could have a defense against Iran's nuclear program. They could isolate Iran in the region. So this was a, this was a strategic move, in my view, to try to make that impossible. And as you okay. have seen with all the reporting, it's not happening. 